The purpose of this video is to show you how to use the new Solution Packager tool in conjunction with the Developer Toolkit for CRM 2011 in an integrated fashion inside of Visual Studio. It is not my goal to explain either the ins and outs of the Developer Toolkit or the Solution Packager tool. So I strongly recommend you read up on both of those tools and get familiar with them. They're both in the latest version of the CRM SDK. And once you've done that, this video will be of use for you. So the first thing I want to do is come over here to Visual Studio and explain to you the general structure here. So you'll notice that I have a solution folder here that contains both the solution packager exe file and a map file that will be used with the solution packager. And notice that I've added these to a CRM solution folder that I've called solution packager. And if I actually open this containing folder, and I'll go up one, you'll notice that I have a physical folder named the same thing as my solution folder. And that's just so I have a naming, a consistent naming convention between what you see in Visual Studio Solution Navigator or Solution Explorer and what you see on disk. Right? So, so for this project, there's a folder there. For this project, there's a folder there. And for this project, there's a folder there. So the way that you add this is, you know, you just come in here and you say, add new solution folder. You can name it whatever you want. Once you have the solution folder, you say add existing item and you point to the existing item in this case that it was these two things that I added. The reason I've added them obviously is so that you can check these into source control and when people do a you know a clean get from source control they've got all the dependent files necessary for all of this to work. Next I have a CRM solution package project and this is a, a standard project that you know the way you create one of these is you say add new project CRM package project. I've named it Solution Packager Demo Package. And right now this contains two web resources, an HTML and a JavaScript web resource, as well as a reference to a plugin project, which is this project right here. I've already created a plugin. And if you understand how the developer toolkit works, it stores the metadata for deploying the plugin in this XML file here. And last but definitely not least is this Visual Studio project called Package Proxy. And the point of this project is just to contain the output of the solution packager unpack process. So if you've read up on solution package, you know what it does is it takes the contents of a CRM solution zip, right? So for example, if I come over here and we go into here and I actually open up a zip solution package, this customizations.xml file contains everything that you see in this structure here, except all the metadata for plugins and everything else, except it's in one big XML file. All right, so what Solution Packager does is it chops that file up into very granular pieces so you can independently source control the different parts of your point and click customizations. So the real magic for all this happens in the overriding of both the build and the clean actions for this project. Now this project is actually the way I added it was just an add new project and I created an empty project and gave it a name. And then I came in here and I unloaded the project. I then edited the project. If you notice down at the bottom I have two targets, I have clean and build. And on clean, I call solutionpackager.exe from the directory that's relative to this Visual Studio solution. I'm giving it the extract command. I'm saying that the zip file to use as a source is it over here in this directory with this name. And then I want to put the output of the extract process in this directory. 
and that I want to use the map file. So on clean, we essentially extract the CRM solution zip file and it will create this structure or the structure that I showed earlier. On build, we do the opposite. We actually take that broken up structure, we call a solution packager, we tell it to pack, The output is going to be this file and the source for the files to create the packed zip file is right here and again use this map file. So if I reload this project and I execute a clean Basically, it's going to have gone through that process where it's reading my mapping XML file. We'll take a look at that in, in a second. Then it's going to extract that zip file and build all the individual files. Then it's saying, okay, I'm going to skip this file right here because it matches a mapping directive. Notice it says as it matches a mapping directive and it actually exists somewhere else. It's also going to skip my htmjs file because it matches a mapping directive and it's also going to skip the .NET DLL because it matches a mapping directive. So let's go look at the mapping file. So basically this is saying instead of copying the contents of the zip file which will contain that DLL just go ahead and ignore it because we know that we have a Visual Studio solution that creates this DLL but if you actually look at the packager pro proxy it still has an XML file for the metadata for that plugin assembly as well as the SDK processing steps but it doesn't actually have the DLL. Likewise, if we go back to the map file here, what I'm saying is for any of the web resources that are inside of the CRM solution package that was exported, don't write them to disk because there are, they already exist on disk in this Visual Studio solution because they're part of this project right here, right? So we don't want to check in duplicates of files. And that's what these two directives basically say. So then when I go to build this, it does the opposite. Instead of unpacking it, it packs it. So when I select build, you see build succeeded. And then it goes through and it's taking all these individual files and packaging them up into a proper CRM solution package. And then the mapping directive causes it to essentially pull the hello.htm that's part of this project right here and put it into that zip file. And then similarly, it will do the same thing for all, all the other web resources and any other binaries are already defined as part of this package. So in my case, I've only got one binary. It's a .NET DLL, but if you had multiple DLLs, then you would want to put them in your map file. If you had Silverlight zap files, you'd want to do the same thing. And again, the SDK has documentation on how all this works. What I've really just showed you is how to get this all integrated into Visual Studio. So the one thing that may not be obvious is where that exported zip file came from. So I'm going to look at the properties here and notice that in the CRM solution package project. I have an output name and notice I've got solution packager demo export. That's the same name that I used in the command line execution of the clean step here that I showed you earlier as the source to unpack, right? And then on the deploy section, I'm telling the output path to be in that same solution packager directory. Notice that I've got export solution as false. The reason I do that is because at any point, if I want to come in here and say deploy, 
It's going to build my .NET DLL. It's going to copy it to my CRM server. It's going to copy my web resources and get everything ready to be tested. Now, the reality is if I were to have this set to true, then after deploy, it would have executed an export from the CRM server. All right, so if I save this and I export this or I deploy this again, it's going to go through the deploy process, but at the end of deploy, it's actually going to export. And so this will take a little bit longer. And so the reason that I always keep it set to false until I'm ready to get the final contents of my exported zip file is because I don't have to worry about the extra step for export. So again, now if I come up here and I open this uh, containing folder, you'll notice that the last modified file is that export because Visual Studio gave me the latest bits, right? So the general pattern here is that I'm writing some code, I'm writing some code, I'm making some changes in the CRM UI through. So I come in here and I deploy. I don't export until I'm sort of done with my work. And then once I'm ready, then I switch this to get my final bits, right? So let's actually walk through what, what this would look at at the end of the day. So let's say I made a bunch of changes to my JavaScript and CSS and HTML and plugins, right? That's stored right here and it gets pushed to the server by the developer toolkit. But I've also come in and let's say that I've modified an entity. We'll take this one. And so let's go ahead and edit the form. But actually, before we do that, let's come in here and let's open this folder. And let's set all the properties to read only for all the files in here. Apply to all files and subfolders. Now, the reason I'm doing this is to mimic source control, right? I haven't actually wired this up to source control, but that's basically what the source control, integrated source control will do is it will actually mark your file as read only uh, on disk after it's checked your file in. And so by doing that now, if I come in here, and let's say I want to change these properties and I want this to span two columns and I can Save and close this. And then I can just go ahead and publish this entity. So this time around, I actually do, now I'm done with my work, right? I actually do want to export my solution. So I'll save that. And I'll go ahead and I'll deploy. Now, the reason I do that, I could have just gone in and manually exported my solution, but I'm in Visual Studio, so deploying one more time just to get it to automate the export for me is just sort of me being lazy. All right, so let me close all these windows. And so again, if I open this up, notice that the latest file is my demo export. And this is a complete zipped up CRM solution, right? So now what I need to do is I need to actually figure out what I need, what, which one of these files I actually need to check out before I check this into source control. Well, because I now have my latest and greatest point and click customizations in the zip file, I can then come in and I can say clean. And so what this is going to try to do is unpack the exported zip file and overwrite the files on disk. But in my case, these are all marked as read only, which your files would be if you've checked them into source control. So basically, Solution Packager tells me, hey, you've got this file that's marked as read only, so I can't overwrite it. And in fact, what is it? It's the file for the form. All right, so now I go into Solution Packager, or I'm sorry, my Visual Studio project here, and I find that main form, and I check it out. In this case, I'm not gonna check it out. I'm gonna come in over here, 
and I'm just going to mark this as read only, right? I'm simulating checking out from source control. So now if I come back in here, and so again, you know, if I had five files that I that it ultimately had been modified, because CRM is the editor for those files, I would have a list of those that would say read only, read only, read only, and I'd come in here and I'd check out those five files. So now when I say clean, and let's just sort of prove this real quick. Let's uh, look at that file. It's currently 10.29 p.m. And so now if I come back over here and I say clean, that clean succeeded. This time it didn't give me any error about this file. It worked successfully, right? So now if I come back over here, I've got a different date modified. So now I, I could come in here and check all my changes in, right? So both whatever I've checked out in terms of my changes for my plugins and my HTML web resources, et cetera, as well as the changes I've made from point and click customization in CRM. So when I come in here to solution manager and I say check in, it's going to check in all my modifications against this individual work item that I maybe have been assigned for the day. Okay, so in summary, we have a standard CRM solution package project that references a plugin that is the source code that gets pushed to the server. This is the source code for our web resources that gets pushed to the server. And this is essentially the source code for the point and click customizations that I did in conjunction with the code changes I made here. And so now that Solution Packager gives us the ability to extract these into very fine grained files that have all of our views and all of the metadata for plugin registration and everything else and has this capability to map and tell the tool to ignore files that are already authored inside of Visual Studio, like the files that create this DLL, like the files that ultimately map to these web resources. We've got full source control capability of our entire CRM customizations. So now, if I've got a folder with three different forms in it, I can actually have developer A editing form one and developer B editing form two. And because we have two different XML files that have those form definitions in them, those can be checked in independently. Now, of course, like with a class file, you wouldn't have multiple developers editing a single class file together, just like you shouldn't have multiple developers editing a single entity at the same time, right? So this doesn't solve, you know, distribution of work and logical breaking up of work items, but it absolutely does solve the ability to, from within Visual Studio, have full source control at a very granular level of all your individual changes as you customize dynamic CRM.